Oh, right, all right, all right, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Salt Mines, where I watch people lose their shiz as they lose at video games. Because you know what makes losing a video game better? If you shout at your opponent and you call them funny, funny names, maybe you get in there with a bit of, a bit of racism, a bit of homophobia, or some common guests on this show. But I never know what's going to come, and sometimes it is oddly and surprisingly wholesome. So I'm kind of hoping that today's episode... Uh, sends us down there, but I have no reason to actually think so. <laughs> Up here at the top right, we've got LOL. LOL. Laugh out loud. And in the bottom left, we have all I do is stim, stim, stim. All I do is stim, 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 and win, win, win. Uh, I do feel like there was some StarCraft song cover where they're like, all I do is stim and win. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a Terran vs. Protoss. Now, I I'm already thinking, just on a meta-analysis of the names of these players, who do we think is going to rage first? Uh, if you guys want, you can put it in the comments and then, of course, edit it later to see if you are right or not. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, I think game one, I mean, it's just LOL, right? LOL, League of Legends, or it could be, but I'm thinking more laugh out loud. And nothing makes us laugh out loud more than someone getting really mad and upset over a video game. So... We'll see how it goes. Uh, obviously, recent weeks of the salt mines, we've seen all sorts of different things and people coming up with uh, oddball excuses and shouting at their opponents. As always, your team is stronger than mine. It's not fair. It's not fair. I always wonder, like, if you think about it, objectively, sports isn't fair. Do you think this is... I I'm wondering how often people in regular sports... <laughs> competitions like, oh, you're just bigger than me. You're just stronger. Oh, he's just taller than me. I guess, like, it is It is probably a thing, right? It's been such a long time since I played competitive sport that I'm, like, as a, as a child, I'm like, I don't really remember that being that big of an issue, but at the same time, I guess I was, I was kind of, like, tall from a young age. So I remember being bigger than all the other kids, and I think that was an unfair advantage for me for, like, a couple of years because I hit my growth spurt, like, way earlier than a lot of the other kids. Where I do remember, like, uh, you know, where it's, like, there's the, the, the meme is, like, there's, like, the... The kind of foreign kid who's like, yeah, I'm 13, but he has like a full beard and he's like 10, 10 years older than everyone else. And you're like, that's that's clearly a man. Well, I, I remember often getting looks like that from people's mums um, when I was when I was playing them in different uh, sports. And I was like, I swear I'm actually 11 Ugh. with like a testy pop as well. You're like, I'm 11. Ugh. Um, Stargate on the way. No gateway unit. Uh, LOL forgot to build a unit. Dude, you've got a gate. Oh, my God. Are you actually just going to defend this with probes? Oh my god, it's definitely, it's definitely LOL that's going to be upset this game. Still is not building a gateway unit. What are you doing, mate? What are you doing? You've even got your gateway on a control group. Finally a stalker starts after all this time. I mean, funnily enough, the Reaper has not been getting that many kills. I mean, this is not the highest level of play. <laughs> Only losing one probe in mining time is kind of impressive considering. But uh, anyways, uh, reactors going down, engineering bay going up in the main base there. We got the bunker on the natural as well. Uh, it could be... Okay, so as much as I think this looks good for Terran, I think our Protoss player might not be the Rager just because they're going Stargates and Cannons and a lot of players' brains break when they play against Stargates and Cannons. Even Terran players, they go... Like, the number of times I've heard people say, man, I just don't know how to beat carriers as a Terran, and I'm like, what? Uh... They're like, yeah, man, they open void rays and cannons, and then they make carriers, and I'm like, the man with the gun does well versus this. Like, <laughs> until they get splash damage up with, like, Storm and Colossus and carriers or something like that, suddenly, you know, up until that point, Marines are pretty good. Now, all I do is Stim has an engineering bay already and is building missile turrets behind the mineral line. Okay, okay. Kind of Silver League turret, that one, but not the end of the world. Uh, Oracle is on the way right now. 30 probes first, 29. Get, get cancer. What? <laughs> get cancer just out of nowhere? What? <laughs> All I do is Stim drops the question mark is like, um, what? That was, was that for the Reaper harass? That was like two minutes ago, man. I mean, the Reaper only ended up getting two probes. Was it the cannon that killed it? I didn't even know. I didn't even know what killed it. Probably probes got it. Oh! Oh, and the oracle flies in the widow mine. Hacking! <laughs> Hacking son of a whore! <laughs> oh, you're one of those guys. Okay, I see this. Get run over by a truck, you, you fucking rat! Oh, my lord! Lol is not happy at all. AFK here. Well, they're saying they're AFK. APM goes to zero. Enjoy playing with map hack. Wait, no, that probe just got into order. We're still typing. Oh, we're going to go hide buildings, aren't we? 
Is that what these probes are? No! Decides to keep macroing. You know what scouting is? Says all I do is dim. Lol says, you freaking ugly rat! I like it. I haven't heard a rat in a hot minute. Um, you know, rat. I kind of, I, I kind of hear it in Conor McGregor's voice. Uh, no job, no degree. Cheats online to feel better. Because what? What if people like no degree? Like, do you guys? I, I feel like it's a fifty percent chance that LOL doesn't have a degree, but feels like it's something that people look down on them for. So they're trying to like be like, maybe if I say this to someone else, they'll be upset because I'm upset when someone says it to me and points points out that I don't have a degree. Tell that to my PhD. Says all I do is dim. P. What PhD? What? What? PhD is Fajo Fajoteri. Um, of course, you guys know we do use certain placeholder words to avoid uh, getting our uh, stuff de demonoed uh, here on to here on YouTube. Uh, all I do is I'm gonna drop the XD. You hacking son of a whore! Says LOL as the oracle flies through a window mine. Hang yourself, you rat! You son of whore! Hang yourself. Okay, guys, is it just me, or did LOL come straight out of the 18th century? These are some old school insults. I can offer a rope if your jobless ass can't afford on. I feel like maybe not made 18th century, maybe like 1930s. People are like, you jobless, no good rat, you. Why well, just pull yourself up by your drawstrings, put in some hard work? You probably can't even afford some rope. Ha! Huh. You know, like, like it was a time where you had to take your hat off when you went inside. You know, you, you, you'd have a hat, you'd tip your hat to a lady. You take your hat off when you go inside. All I do is Stim has a pretty nonsense army. I don't know what the Hellions are here for, but I appreciate the fact that it's going to kill LOL, who has literally nothing. He's trying to build mass cannon battery, can't get it up, has to cancel it all. And there's one stalker. Did you guys just see that screen flash? That was kind of weird. I don't know if I just like half alt tabbed or something. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. We got Void Rays, Double Immortals, both Templar structures, Dark and regular Templars. So, uh, looks like this is gonna be one where we see a bit of homophobia, but maybe no racism in this one, you know, going for the, uh, the light and the dark Templar at the same time. So at least this is an inclusive, uh, sort of homophobia. I like it, I like it. LOL's gonna be building Storm, Immortals, Void Rays in charge. You can always tell when someone really doesn't understand how to play StarCraft, when they just click every piece of tech at once and they have, like, two units and they go, WHY DID I LOSE THE GAME?! I, I made all the different upgrades, I made all the buildings, I made one of each, just like it shows on the box. And you're like, uh, did you not read the warning on that box art? It says, this is box art, if you actually build this army. It says it in fine print on the box, you will lose the game. This is not a good way to play StarCraft. Battery overcharge, but not actually using it to manually heal the Cybercore. Oh no, he is, he is. It's just, there was so much damage that it wasn't doing anything. I still don't know why there's Mass Alien here. But uh, I, I feel like uh, LOL is definitely in a bit of, uh, bit of a boo-boo. Uh, three barracks, third command center. So there is a decent macro follow-up in, in those regards. I do wonder, I mean, all I do is Stim could just pick up and go in the main, but the Immortals actually probably deal with this army. Stim never got upgraded. Shields will be done. Stim will be ready soon. Fourth and fifth barracks coming up. Lots of money for all I do is Stim though. I definitely would like to see all I do is Stim build like five barracks right now. It hasn't dropped an orbital in about five minutes. The command set is maxed. It does scan the natural and check it out. Looks like probes are going to go try and hide. Maybe trying to take the gold base from behind. Lol as always. A very happy camper here. Just, uh, you know, for, for me, I think what's so impressive about this whole thing, I keep getting sidetracked because they keep talking about other things, is they said hacker. And was that... That was after the Widow Mine blew up the Oracle, right? Before that, they said get cancer. And that was for a Reaper coming across the map, finding them with literally zero units. Like, a player who... And they also didn't scout as well. I feel like that's actually a big part of it. I think this sort of player, it's the sticking their head in the sand, basically having no scouting info, no knowledge of what's going on in the game, and then getting really upset whenever the opponent does anything to them. I feel like this is almost like, uh, we need to make up a word for this category of StarCraft player, right? Where it's like, they're like, I never scout, I don't look at what's happening, but if you ever do any strategy that beats my strategy, I will be really upset about it. And you're like, it's, 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 it's pretty fragile. Lol with the XD there has the hidden corner base found. It's always these players who have no fundamentals who try to sneak corner bases. They're always just... And corner bases are actually a very good strategy. XD... Wait, smiley face into get run over by a truck. Stop stealing good air. <laughs> a decent person could breathe. Stop stealing good air. A decent person could be breathing instead. You reaper harassed me. 
We gotta we gotta check back. We gotta check back. I I, I know you guys don't like rerunning too much. Don't worry, I won't. So the Reaper, how did he die first of all? So he goes in and then he goes back in and then is it is it when he dies here? So he kills one more probe and then the cancer comment comes out, right? Oh no, or is it when he gets out of the base? Oh, maybe it's when he goes in the... Okay, so it's after he's gone in the second time that the, the Get Cancer comment comes out. The Reaper actually did not die. So it's it's Get Cancer straight into You Must Be Hacking. <laughs> because the Widow Miner... I mean, if you think about it, there's like three spots you're going to put a Widow Mine on the edge. You're going to put it either there, there, and then like on this edge, right? That's Those are the only three spots you're going to put a Widow Mine, unless it's actually in the Mineral Lines or something. And the Reaper came in twice and saw you building oracles mate saying that's hacks is ridiculous also because when you see the oracle coming you don't know if it's going to come in from this side or the very bottom of the map if it came in from the very bottom it wouldn't have got hit by that widow mine so you could argue if they were hacking they would have left it unburrowed waited for the oracle to get closer and then and then only burrowed at the last second as i say that yeah it looked like it was going to continue south he'd already told it to burrow when it looked like it was going to go deeper so, argument dismantled, as if we even needed to dismantle the argument. But, uh, lol, apparently just a sore loser. Ah, uh, that was a nice way to warm us up. Just the classic, uh, get cancer into hacking, op uh, hacking accusation into some 1930s. You don't even have, you're not even as well educated as me. You as a well waste of air with your lack of a job and degree. Well, let's see if we can level things up from here. Down here in the bottom left, we've got Stringfellow. In the top right, we've got me, Hanoid. Me hanoid. I don't know what that means. Me hanoid. Uh, paranoid, but me me paranoid. Uh, it's Protoss versus Zerg though, and it is the salt mines. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say we're gonna have a salty Zerg because they're about to get cannon rushed. Oh, and and I was actually a little salty today on my stream. I got cannon rushed a few times, <laughs> and I kept forgetting to do the response that I'd planned to do. With a, uh, I've been doing 15 hatch 15 pool, and you meant to defend with spine crawlers, and I really wanted to test it out, and I kept forgetting to do it or doing it wrong, and trying to like snipe the pylons instead of the cannons, and losing my hatchery by like a second. Um, this is really blatant though. That probe is just hanging out behind the minerals. It's a very suspect probe. Mihanoid is sending a drone down. It's going gas pool, but oh man, this is actually really well set up by Stringfellow. This is a dirty push, man. Like, Mianoid's not going out with a drone is like, oh, okay, it's just a fake. He's not really, yeah, he's just acting suspicious. Little does he know this is the recessed cannon rush, the one that's it's just recessed a little bit further back from the natural expansion. It's such a nasty build. And this is pretty high level, I'd say. Just because, like, chronoing probes behind it, they're both spending their money, sending a drone to follow their probe, then going back to mining while going gas pool. And this is the point where you should have your spidey sense tingling, Mianoid. The Overlord's going to spot it either way. The Overlord's going to see it momentarily. There we go. And the cannon's already finished. And immediately, Mianoid's like, oh, you're kidding me. Seriously? Getting cannoned in. Uh, I'm sure the salt is not too far away in this one, man. This is a, a rough way to play. Because you're like, okay, I'll go double gas ravager. And then you're like, oh, wait, I can't. So I think he needs to send a drone out right now and get it past that cannon. If you can get it past, because then you can expand elsewhere. But otherwise, you're kind of hemmed in. He's going to go two Queen Eight Link. You know what? There is a way where you build a wall of spines and queens. And you just try to defend with a wall of spines and queens. Or you even run forward with the spines and queens and try to root them. Problem is, spine crawlers take a long time to root. Think of it this way. Spore crawlers, they're your teenage boy. They're ready to pop, you know? Uh, just tug it out of the ground for one second. Bam! Back in the ground. It's it's it, it's it's ready to explode all over their air units. Spine crawler on the end. Maybe higher damage. Uh, obviously, it's got the two armor as well. It's like a bit more solid and firm and experienced. But it does take a little bit more to get it to pop off. So uh, that's the the very scientific explanation of that. But now we've got a Bane Ling Ness and Ling Speed on the way. So it's going to be Ling Bane. Oh, Ling Bane's actually pretty good. Especially if you clump your buildings. Stringfellow needs to realize what's up and spread these buildings out. These are really clumped up. The problem is Bane Lings do splash damage. They do 80 damage to buildings. Uh, plus 5 her upgrade. I just found out they actually do get bonus damage to buildings with upgrades. I never knew that until the other day. 13 years into my StarCraft journey, found something new out. Um, but yeah, so if you get a Baneling in the middle, they're going to be hitting multiple structures. Now, Adepts and Stalkers are coming out. This is still really hard for me, Annoyed Man. I mean, it's a lot of Zerglings and uh, cannons ruin them, but nice surround. Seize the Baneling Nest. Yeah, seize the Baneling Nest. Okay, so at this point, Stringfellow just needs to build as many cannons as possible and spread them out. No, don't clump it up! He's going to build another battery uh, and a, another cannon than a robo there. I mean, walling off with a gateway would also be legendary, right? If you can wall off with a gateway and make sentries would be huge. 
Sentries would be game ending, in fact. If you get sentries and you spread, you need another pile on here and then cannon spread backwards. I still feel like you're not going to have enough banelings, though. Six banelings can blow up the front, but then there's still more cannons wedged in the back. Unless you can take out this pylon, it's a lot of damage output there. Stringfellow is going to go for the robo as well. He's going to try to... Oh my god, we're going to like create a choke point here. This is so dirty. Batteries, remember, only have 300 hit points. Only four banelings to blow up a battery. Uh, same for a cannon. So that's actually pretty damn fragile. A gateway, on the other hand, takes about 12. So... A thousand hit points here. A thousand divided by eight, twelve, I think thirteen actually, because twelve would be nine hundred and sixty damage. Double gas is up, man. If this goes much longer, you have to get out. I think Meanoid's dead. Meanoid's taking too long, I think. Then again, there's only three cannons up with a fourth one getting walled off in the back, though. I don't know, dude. Oh man, I think we're gonna see a Robo Bay. I think we're gonna see Colossus or Disruptors come out. The Adepts and the Stalkers shading in. Meanoid is being very patient though and spending their money really well. I'm telling you, this is Masters Plus for sure. Um, this is at least Masters League, just with how Meanoid's kind of calmly building up the units. And take out that Adept as well. Can't be throwing these units away. is trying to build more cannons, more batteries here. These Banelings, I don't even know. I think you got to go Baneling there, and then shift-click on this cannon. And then you can blow up two big clumps with the Banelings. You're going to need a lot of Banelings. They're going for it! Meanoid's going for the bust! The great escape being attempted. Clicks on the front battery. Tries to shove it in. Those Banelings need to get on that other battery. They need to get in. They're getting through. They are getting through a little bit. But, oh, man. I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough. As I said, yeah. Meanoid actually put up a really valiant effort. And uh, does get held at the end of the day, though. That cannon's got three kills, seven kills, nine kills, five kills. And that's going to be game over, unfortunately. So, bad luck there for Meanoid. Now, um, deliver, deliver our prize. We, we, you actually played well. A lot of the salt mines people playing really bad. Now deliver us our uh, salty treats, please. <laughs> Meanoid's not ready to give up. Actually attacked his own Zergling there, but does kill a Stalker in the depth, which is pretty nice. Um, there is two gases mining, so it's just going to be, I'm going to keep making Banelings and smashing them into this and see if I can break out. Eunice Lost Tab tells us a story that this is not really working though. And, uh... More cannons being built in the back. I mean, Stringfellow's just got a checkmate position here. This is clearly an experienced cheese that Stringfellow's doing. Lair's gonna come up for Mihanoid. Oh my god. I mean, we're gonna try and knight us out of the main. Now, to be fair, there's no expansion. There's no follow-up. And Stringfellow's not using the Robo. If, if there's a Colossus out, it kills unlimited Zerglings and Banelings. But for some reason, Stringfellow is making unupgraded adepts. Oh my god, my monitor just turned back. Did I just kick a cable? I think I just kicked a cable. Sorry, guys. It just flashed back on for me. It didn't ever disappear for you guys, so that's a good thing. Uh, I better make sure I've got a bunch of tape cables tangled up. My, my headphones are kind of wrapped around a long thing right now. It's a whole long story with my audio setup. Anyways, uh, adepts are going to be shading on in here as well, trying to get into that main base. Ling Bane coming on down. Okay, third base going up on that left side as well. Hmm. <laughs> All right, Nidus Worm's going to come in. I mean, I feel like this is just... Uh... So the problem is, guys, if you feel like you've lost, you should probably just throw in the game. Because if you feel like you've lost, you want to throw in the towel, right? Because if you don't think you can win... You probably should give up. Now, arguably, there's no scout over there. There's still no wall off. There's only one cannon at home. Maybe Stringfellow's open and just getting Bane busted. But if they just recall probes here, get some cannons there, like, they'll still be fine. So, I don't know, man. On the other hand, there's no Colossus. There's no Colossus yet. The Robo Bay's finally coming in. I just feel like the longer you stay in a game where you've been getting beaten up the way Mihanoid has, the angrier you're going to get. The angrier, because, like, it builds up, right? It's always the game where you, you kind of lose at the 10 minute mark, but you keep rage playing and just refusing to die. And if you're doing it with a smile on your face, you're not rage playing, you're playing because you're like, oh, I'll just play it out. Let them work for it. Let's see how it goes. That's okay. But if you're sitting there going, oh, I'm not going to give you this win. No, no. That's when it builds up and you feel really helpless. And then when it finally comes out, you start to say very, very bad things. Looks like a recall went down, but only recalled half the probes. That's a problem, guys. The Nidus is going up, and Stringfellow's just sitting here trying to make a Colossus right now, but is going to lose this main base. There's more than enough Ling Bane to get in and overwhelm the cannon, but can't be going in piecemeal, mate. Cannon going to be get... Oh, the boys! The boys with the ring of hold position. Going to need Banelings to pop out here to take that one out. This cannon is actually going to kill a lot of Zerglings until the Banelings get here, man. Oh no, he runs the probes away. Stringfellow abandoning station there. That cannon got like eight kills. Could have got even more. 
and they're going to pull away right now. Ling's going after them. As long as the probes mineral walk, they'll be fine, but they didn't, which is why they keep getting blocked. Notice whenever the Lings get in front of them, they get their movement blocked. You see here, they're all getting blocked by each other. If they're clicked on the mineral patch, they'd make it away. The Colossus and the Adepts are going to try to counter push right now. Ling Bane, Queen Spine trying to defend. Mianoid has just said, well, I'm just going to keep making Ling Bane Queen and pull back here. That Colossus is such a problem. Second Colossus with Viagra on the way. If Stringfellow can protect this base on the left and get up some units there, say a Warp Prism, can, there's no way to lose this game for Stringfellow if they know how to do Warp Prism Micro. I've watched enough of the King of Cannons to do this. Whoa! Whoa! Stringfellow says, a more R-worded player I've never seen. <laughs> What? I could have sworn it was going to be me annoyed. Dude, you did like the dirtiest cheese in the book and you're calling your opponent R-worded? Your build is R-worded. You're the R-worded. <laughs> Stringfellow. Impl I'm not even implying. Straight up saying that their opponent is mentally challenged. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah. The oh, nice. Nice swim over there. Going to go after that Nexus. The Adepts and the Colossus will move back. I mean, as long as you keep this base up, you're still in a game-winning position. Burrow is on the way for a Meonoid. Oh, Meonoid's losing a lot of Zerglings, though. You can still see the units lost time is pretty bad. Now, if Meonoid can mine from their natural, obviously they're okay, but the main's mining out now, so they need to start transferring workers down. They're going to try and make a Roach Warren now. There's definitely... You just cannot fight into the cannon battery. That's a losing choice. But you know what? Stringfellow hasn't built a prism. Now, Stringfellow is saying... You're R-worded. You're, I've never met someone more R-worded than you. Ugh. But everybody knows that when you have a container like this, a warp prism means your Colossus can go forward, pick off units. When they jump on you, just pick it up, get out of there. It is literally the insurance that means you cannot lose in these scenarios. But actually, it doesn't do that. They, oh, the Ling Bane! The Ling Bane! Oh my god. I mean, it kills the Adepts, but still a terrible fight for me, Annoyed. Oh, easy. Now get the... Fudge out, says Stringfellow. Oh my lordy lord. Talk about a cocky idiot, man. Dude, when I win games like this, I do giggle a little bit because I know it's kind of silly what I've done. But I, I always feel like, well, I won because I did a cheap move, you know. What I love is people who don't have that self-awareness. They're like, what? I just teach you with a better strategy than you. Out! Out! He's saying out! Out! Whoa, what a piece of poo! You're an ass, Stringfellow. You're literally doing one of the cheapest strategies in the book. And you're like telling your opponent to get out. Oh my god! They do like no damage to roaches and queens, you dummy! This is why you bring a warp prism to save them! Oh my god! Me annoyed with like the five roaches they have popping out. Manages to kill a colossus. There's still two colossus left. But if you get enough roaches and ravages out, yeah, you can definitely deal with that. Especially if you get roach speed. Unfortunately, there's no roach speed right now. The roaches are trying to deal with this. These colossus do have nine range. If they start a step backwards, they do very well. But Stringfellow lost the nexus on the left while talking smack to their opponent. Dude, everybody is cheering for Meonoid right now. We thought Meonoid was going to be the rager, but oh my god, Stringfellow. Turns out that they indeed are the bag of phalluses. Oh, Colossus gets blocked by the other Colossus. It goes down as well. Meonoid. Drop the question mark. Drop the question mark. <laughs> yes. You effing runt. Die of cancer. <laughs> oh... That there is a glorious. That is, of course, what we all need more of in our life. That was absolutely beautiful, mate. Well played, me annoyed for hanging on. I thought you were just pretty screwed. But <laughs> never underestimate a cheesy player's ability to get cocky and throw the game. Well, that just made my day, guys. I don't care what the hell else happens in this show right now. Uh, for me, it's, it's already been made. Oh, I just... I mean, we have a term for what uh, the excitement that we all feel as a community when something like that happens or someone's talking smack while cheesing and then uh, gets overconfident and loses the game. And that's what we call a justice boner. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's where you feel righteously erect. Um, <laughs> down at the bottom left side, we've got Snake the Red Terran. And in the top right, we've got Major Cheese. So TVT, this one, guys, and it's a low APM. So we're back in real salt mines territory with some nice low APM games. Looks like, I'd say, about Silver League APM. This is the sort of APM where you're not expecting control groups from either players. But already, Major Cheese defying our expectations and got, has a command center on a control group. Did build a second depot before the barracks, so could be critical, but using a control group, which is already amazing. Darren, the bottom left, Snake, on the other hand, is like control groups. I don't even know what a control group is. I have almost i have like 50 percent more apm than you at 37 verse 25 average 
but I don't use those control groups. I just click, click, click. And that's amazing for me. Like when someone sends an SCV out to, wait, why they're round, they're rallying what oh they rallied the scout out okay now they rallied it back yeah playing starcraft without control groups is like a conundrum to me oh major cheese is doing the wall off so you can't scout my three racks into build all three barracks in vision of the scv even if you get you raise the deeper can't say i'm the biggest fan major cheese he's like ah i blocked your scouting idiot you can't get in my base you idiot the scv is just like uh, you know I can see all of your production that you you could have built it over there. <laughs> and I wouldn't have been able to see it. <laughs> That's okay, guys. I don't think Major Cheese is necessarily doing an all-in. I think they're, because it's they're building a bunker here. I think this is just um an artist's impersonation of a macro game. Uh, Snake, on the other hand, is something that looks a little bit more like a proper build order. It's like Reaper, SCV Scout, Low Ground, you know, One Racks Expand, uh, Reactor... Second barracks coming in. This seems like a, a more normal build for Snake. But the lack of control groups is going to hurt you. Snake's already down two workers. But actually, they made an orbital and dropping mules. Major Cheese doesn't have anything like that. And man, this is like really low level StarCraft. I love it. Because like you never know what's going to happen. Any advantage can be thrown away in an instant. Any any disadvantage can be obliterated in a moment. It does it. You never know where it's going to go because at any point, a player might just move command their army past the enemy army. And the assault, like, we're, we don't have orders. We're not allowed to shoot back. And they're like, they're shooting at us. They're like, oh, well, you know, rules of engagement. And you're like, ah, uh, don't know if that applies, buddy. Uh, Reaper is here trying to do some grenades. Nice micro for Snake. So Snake here doesn't use... Oh, wait, wait, They added control groups, guys. Snake now has a control group for the Reaper on one... Barracks on four, command centers on five. It's just, they're so chaotic as a player, they only remembered to set that up once they were a few minutes into the game. But they also used shift click. Did some nice little micro there and stuff. It seems to me like Major Cheese, who by the way has cheese in their name, is long distance. This is reminding me of that build. Wait, didn't a guy play like this, guys? Didn't we watch... And he was like, wow, the other player's pieces are so broken. I can't remember. I think it was the end, like towards the end of season one, I believe it was. Major Cheese says GG. <laughs> what? Major Cheese is moving out with some Marines. Has Marines ready to stop the Reaper. And he's saying GG. Like, like I think it's an offensive GG. Like, get out of the game. You're done. You're done, man. This is the worst attack I've ever seen. No scouting, no information. Says, you're done. And comes across with nine marines, not even rallying more. Long distance mining, no mules, nothing like that. This is appallingly bad, this attack. Snake did drop some love hearts. Might regret that. Okay, quick lift on the command center for this league, guys. I'm feeling more like Gold League uh, vibes as this game goes on. Uh, Major Cheese is like, yeah, get out, idiot. But rather than running up the ramp quickly, is now going to go up, loses a marine on that ramp, and uh, Major Cheese probably feeling pretty good because he's like, well, I denied your command center, and I have one. To be fair, Major Cheese does have an SCV advantage, but still no mules dropping, no add-ons, and even though gas is kind of mining, we're building buildings in positions where they can't even fit add-ons. So you can kind of tell that they're just going to have to play a really derpy game. Now, a scan goes down on the low ground. Stim is on the way, so Snake is making, he's going to make Medivac, Stim, and more marines which will definitely beat Marines without Stim, unless you are vastly outnumbered. And, I mean, the numbers are in Major Cheese's favor, but rallying army across the map doesn't look well. A single... Uh, doesn't look good for him. A single tech lab on the way. And, guys, who... Who is brave oh, enough when they're going oh, across a, a fog of war dark map, they have no idea what's going on, to say, you're done? When they've literally showed the three racks to their opponent, let the Reaper do a full loop of their base. Oh! And then the opponent comes down with Stim! I think three, I think three Marines went down, maybe four for like 15. Oh my Lord. Yeah, five for 15 in total this game. Oh, that hurts. Major Cheese is like, well, that's fine. I'll make shields. We don't need stim. I don't like drugs. Drugs are bad, okay? It's gonna go for a factory with a tech lab as well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because the last game, I really felt like the confidence in how they said it. Because it was like a master's game for sure, where it was like, okay, you're doing this cheese, you're really cocky, you're a bit of a dick, I totally get it. But in this game, Major Cheese had no context of what was going on. It goes across the map with one of the worst things ever, and I'm like, I feel like they're joking, but then there's another part of me that says, I've seen enough games of, of 
really low level players in all sorts of games not just starcraft and man what they call it that spot where it like you're so ignorant that you're like you're not aware of how ignorant dunning kruger or whatever it's called that one the dunning kruger effect i think that's what it is it's it's where you don't realize how ignorant you are you know you've got absolute confidence because you just don't know enough about the thing to realize how bad you are maybe that's major cheese's issue now major cheese does have plenty of marines to defend this uh but he's gonna right are we gonna pull is gonna pull all the SCVs to fight? No! You have enough Marines to A move it, dude! Oh my god, but Major Cheese runs the SCVs in front. Snake stutter steps backwards, gunning them all down. And the Marines were on move command! I told you guys about the move command! I told you! When I see that low of an APM from my, my the players, I know we're gonna see we're gonna see the move command. Oh, what a Fajot runt you are. Major Cheese even leaving the gap to make sure it gets around the censorship. And that, that, that tells you it's not just a single moment of rage. That is a set play. That is a build that they use. I love you, babe. I love you, babe, says Snake. Loser! You're utter shit. Go okay. I, t you're utter shit. Go okay. <laughs> uh, so dumb. All right, guys, so we're going to get into this one now. Grumpy Dwarf down here in the bottom right, our Protoss player. Magna, the Zerg in the top left. We're going to see some more, more Dunning Krugers, maybe. Maybe some Kruger Dunnings. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This, I believe, is going to be the last replay for today's show. And it's a Zerg versus Protoss. Now, Grumpy Dwarf is a name that goes with someone raging, right? It's part of the character. We used to actually have a pro player for many years in Australia called Iagaz. People called the Gimli Terran due to his awesome beard. And, uh, and he, his, his, his kind of character was almost like a meme because he was always very gruff and kind of grumpy. So he really lived up to the, the kind of, the, 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 you know, sort of angry, grumpy dwarf meme uh, stereotype. But uh, he, was, he was a really cool dude, in actual fact. He was kind of, you know, he'd put it on a little bit and be a bit gruff on purpose. But uh, I always wonder, grumpy dwarf, you know, just a cool person that likes playing some Deep Rock Galactic or someone who's actually a bit of a cranky pants. Now, that drone walked right past a pylon into your base. Grumpy Dwarf! Please tell me you are paying attention. I don't think Grumpy Dwarf is paying attention. Now, Grumpy Dwarf comes in, sees a very late spawning pool, so it must be a hatch first. So you should just go down and check for the hatchery. And when you don't see that, you should start to get worried, Grumpy Dwarf. Because Grumpy Dwarf did not notice that drone walk into his base. I'm pretty sure he didn't. Second gate Cybercore would be a good idea right here. Anything that's not going straight for a Nexus would be good. Cybercore goes down. Probe sees no expansion. Oh, actually, wait, wait, that's in vision. The gas guys are finished. This is in vision, guys. Let's go to Grumpy Dwarf's vision. Grumpy Dwarf sees it. It's on the left of his screen. There's no way he hasn't noticed that. Scrolls up, clicks the gateway, and, and oh, no. Oh, no. There's no gateway control group. He, he scrolled up like this, clicked on the gateway, and then started the Zealot. But a big probe pool will do it. That's going to cost you a lot of money, though, so you will end up behind if you pull that many probes. That's way more than you need. If you pull about five probes straight away, I believe it dies by the time it finishes. Um, this is a bit of an overreaction, but spotting it late, you do want to be careful. Oh, cancel, cancel, cancel into Evo Chamber. Cancel into Evo Chamber. Cancel into Evo Chamber. No, just cancel into Runaway. Oh, very cute. Magna running away at the last second. Drone's going to do a bit of a loop-de-loop. -de -loop -de -loop. Six lings coming across the map. Nothing in the wall off right now, so this drone might just distract. Grumpy Dwarf never built a second pylon. Oh no, Grumpy Dwarf is chronoing sight warp gate, but Grumpy Dwarf is just staring at this hatchery. Guys, the first thing you do whenever you're getting cheese is you build a second pylon, second gate, cybercore, make two zealots, make two adepts or stalkers. All Grumpy Dwarf has done is made a single zealot this whole time. He's going to try to wall off. It's a race. Wait, wait, wait. It's a race. Can he get it up? The drone. The drone could block the drone. The drone blocked the wall off. Oh, okay. Grumpy Dwarf's not going to be happy. 100% Grumpy Dwarf rages out of this game. Forgetting your second pile on. Oh, and another hatchery goes down. What an R word. Like, what's wrong with you all? Oh, Grumpy Dwarf, I feel you've probably been cheesed a few times today. So you're a bit less focused. And then you forget your second pile on. You trash clown. Magnus says, breathe, buddy. Drops the smiley face and says, breathe. Without any game sense. I like that. You don't have game sense. <laughs> go, go, go off yourself. Oh, we're bringing out Autist. I haven't heard that in a hot minute, guys. Autist is an insult. Oh, is anyone else feeling nostalgic for 2015? 
I just, I feel like there was, that was 2015, 2017, maybe sometime around then, everyone was like, this, that's autistic, this is autistic. It was, it was just the classic thing to kind of imply your opponent doesn't have social skills or something. But the funny thing is, I would say in the StarCraft community, usually we'd see that more in reference to being like someone who's way better than you in a macro game is like, wow, you, you, yeah, you're, you're cognitively different to me. And I, that's why you're better than me. I, you know, normally it's the cheesy players who you call like, well, you're a, you know, low IQ moron or something like that. It's interesting, but Grumpy Dwarf kind of switches it around there. And uh, I feel for you, we all get angry when we get cheesed. But if you take a second look at the replay, you will realize this was one of the least optimized things that you've ever seen. Either way, though, I'm loving today's theme. The second and third replay were both cocky players getting absolutely punished. And it just makes me so happy. Let me know in the comments your stories of when cocky players have found their comeuppance in your own games. Or maybe it's you. Maybe you have a story of you got cocky and then you threw the game. I've definitely done it before as well. So I try not to get cocky anymore because it's very embarrassing when you lose games like that. Big thanks to everyone who's been supporting the Patreon, guys. Uh, click on some of the other videos on screen if you want to check out some other salty players. But if you want to go above and beyond to support the channel, please check out the Patreon. Links in the description. A special thanks to Jacob Jet, Jacob G, Max Ann, and everyone else over here on our lovely wall of bacon. Thank you, thank you so much for going above and beyond. I can't speak. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.